Hello everybody, it's Kevin here again and this week we're going to be covering some SQL Server stuff. We're going to be using SQL Server for storing our data with our uh, APIs. The reason we're going to be using SQL Server is just because I, ha I had the option to use MongoDB which is just a document type uh, storing system. It's very similar to JSON and it works pretty well. It's pretty quick. It works well with big data. However, I think that it would be better if we just stuck with a relational database because that's very common in industry. SQL's been around for really long time. If we look at uh, this here Northwind database example, just this query was 1994 to 2000, so just keep in mind it's old, it's been around for a long time, a lot of businesses are using it, so it's good to have this skill. So I'm going to include this here SQL script for you all to install and for you all to uh, get all this data inside of your database, your Northwind database. Uh, Northwind is a very common database for learning because it uh, it does mirror some real, real world situations. So I also have an ERD that I'll provide. I have a screenshot of it. And if you don't have the ERD, if you don't want to use this PDF, you could always go to da database diagrams, create one, which I already have. It's right here. You can move this around, do whatever you got to do to it. Works pretty well. So we can see our constraints right here. We can see our keys. And it works pretty good just for this. So if I go back here, well actually I should cover, uh, it is most of review, but one to many, many to many, we're not going to see any many to many, we're just going to see our one to many, so one product to, uh, it's uh, multiple products, multiple orders, linking entity is our order details right here, which is, uh, which I'm going to refer to as a linking entity, so we have a couple linking entities right here, here's another one, so these linking entities of course will link two tables so if these tables for example don't have the the same cons uh, the same keys so if we need a key f between this or the same key between these two instead of doing that we can just have a we can have a linking entity and that'll that'll cover handling those constraints pretty well so I'm gonna go back just make sure to get this installed it should be golden so we're gonna go to our script we're gonna start off by using Northwind so use Northwind we're gonna go and this go is if you think about like assembly it'll just move on to the next instruction and this isn't necessary for all queries but it is uh, really useful for when you're creating stuff like tables and databases and inserting stuff so it's just be mindful of that and use it as necessary so crud crud what is this this is create read update and delete. So if we cover for example create. So where would uh, create be used? Well create database dot test db. So if we were to execute this here command and have a go right after that it would create a new database test db. So that's just the basic syntax of that. If we wanted to create some tables we could scroll down here create our table employees. Uh, if you ever want a good example of creating tables, look at this here SQL script. This has some excellent examples of creating tables. It has our nullables, it has our data types, it has our constraints, and it's good to name your constraints instead of having them just be automatically named because it's really useful when you're uh, when you're using when you're creating store procedures and doing some manipulation with database items. It's really uh, really important to name your constraints. So just keep that in mind. Uh, you'll see a couple keywords here. I'm not going to cover these some of these keywords just because they're a Google search away. I'm just going to cover most of the important stuff that you will be using. So if I go back here, that's our create table. So covered that. Next, we want to cover our read. So read. That'll be pretty similar. Pretty uh, the, the command that you'll probably be using to read is select. So select. So we can select items from a table, we can select from multiple tables by joining, so we can have our select, we can have our joins. And an example of our select would be like select all from, and you'll see this, so you'll see this sometimes, I sometimes use it, sometimes I don't, depends on what I'm working on, but you'll see DBO, it's just database order. 
just specifying where you're getting that uh, database from. So DBO dot uh, products. So since we already specified Northwind, we're going to be using from the Northwind database. We're going to grab from the table products. And you'll also see these here identifiers. So products P. And this is basically just, uh, it helps, especially with the joins, uh, specify which uh, specific attribute you're going to be uh, selecting. So products P. And in this join, we're actually not even going to be, we're not even going to need to use that P. So just select all from products, execute this, and we're going to get all of our products. If we want to select all from orders, execute this, we'll get all of our orders. So this is fine and dandy. We, we can use our selects and we can select from any of these here tables. It'll get the job done for a lot of our queries, but sometimes you want to select from multiple tables. And uh, to do that, we're going to need to join. So if we wanted to join, we would need to do the following. So say we wanted to, for example, I'll pull up that, uh, pull up that ERD once again. Say we wanted to select our product ID, unit price, uh, product name, uh, order ID, the freight, the order date, we would need to uh, uh, use a join. So what we're going to do is we're just going to do select and we want to select our product ID. So p.product ID, p. Let's see here, unit price, p. Dot units in stock and what else might we want from this one p dot category ID and we need a pull from this and we also need a pull from our orders table so we're also going to need to get our o orders table dot orders ID and it's not orders ID it's just order ID orders table uh, see here I guess we could pull our shipper name so ship name orders dot ship country and what else could we pull from this orders dot freight and I'm just gonna go over this real quick if if you're creating a long select like this it's usually a pretty good idea to just have them on a new column Run a new, uh, what do you call it? Just uh, use indentation. It makes it a lot easier to read. So I'm going to go ahead and use my indentation here. So now I'm going to specify that we're going to pull from products P. So now that we specified that, we're just telling this basically hey, wherever you see P, we're going to be grabbing this here attribute from this table. And what we need to do now is we need to go ahead and do a join. So we need to join, and we need to provide what we're going to be joining, the table name. And since one of the tables that we're going to be joining from, we have our order details table. So that one has a space in it, so we got to use this here uh, bracket, order details. And then I'm going to specify an attribute for that, or uh, not an attribute, an identifier for that. So OD. So we're going to select from this, and we're going to join this here table with this one on <coughs> p.productid is equal to od.productid. So excellent. We got that covered, but now if you notice here, we still have these attributes that are not uh, bound to anything. So we need to bind them. We need to provide that binding. So we're going to join, do another join, o. Let's see here, orders. on od dot order ID is equal to o dot order ID and if we execute this we should get that join table and we do which is perfect so this can this can grow as much as you want it to grow uh, these can be a little bit tricky sometimes the joins can be a little bit tricky and just at the end of the day refer to your ERD that's what's gonna that's gonna be one of your best friends when you're joining because you can tell right away 
what you need to join and what you can join on so we can tell right here our order details has our product ID and our order ID and it helps with these here visuals right here we have our uh, constraints here so that they help a lot so that would be our joins and our selects so read basically next we want to cover our deleting so delete and the keyword for delete is equals just delete if I can type it right <laughs> of course L E T E. there you go so if we wanted to delete some stuff we would just delete from dbo.products and then where product ID and we have to specify a condition so right here is our condition so we're product ID what about the product ID well before I even do this I'm just going to select all from products if we highlight the line or lines that we want to execute it'll execute the uh, lines that are selected so right here we can see our product IDs if we wanted to delete uh, if we wanted to delete product ID 1 this here entire row just do where product ID is equal to 1 if we execute this um, we have a constraint so that's obviously going to be an issue but if we delete from a table that doesn't have a constraint and we specify that condition it'll delete so if we go back to our products nothing's going to be different because we didn't actually delete anything so that's our delete but now we also want to cover our updates so say we wanted to update the value in this here row where the product ID is equal to 1 well to update keyword is update so we would update this example just dbo.products set so we have to set our values there's different uh, there's different ways to update you can update in bulk you can update uh, based on a couple different properties and uh, that's like I said just one Google search away what I'm just gonna show is how to uh, update one property so what we're going to be doing here is we're just going to be updating let's see here our product name from chai to something else so set product name let's see here set our product name equal to and then once uh this is sometimes confusing when you're jumping between a programming language and sql you use what would be typically like to what would be used to specify characters in like Java or C or C sharp or C++ we would just use this for a string instead of this so where our product name or not where our product name we would set our product name equal to uh, test in this example and then we would have to specify that condition so where product and this is where those identifiers can be pretty nice but I'm just not even gonna use them right now because we're just messing with one here one table here so where our product name or not even where our product name or our product ID because it's better to do something based on a product ID just because this is always unique on any sort of unique or on any sort of unique ID that's what I prefer to uh, do my updates and deletes on you don't want to delete a whole bunch of stuff unless that is your intention if you want to delete uh, based on a certain condition where the product name is a misspelled version of car so an example of like like for example uh, see here Hyundai so if you wanted to if you if your uh, one of your employees misspelled Hyundai uh, and you wanted to change that so that the uh, name of that car was appropriate so so that the uh, spelling was correct you would just uh, update where that uh, car name is equal to that misspelled and then you would set it to the correct spelling in this example we're just going to be updating this name based on this product ID so where the product ID is equal to 1 and we're going to execute this here query one row has been affected and once again if we select select all from dbo.products execute that we can tell that our product name is now test so these are just the basics of PRED 
create, read, update, del uh, delete. So just remember, if you want some good examples, look here. Set your constraints similar to here. Uh, your tables, you know, just refer to this. I know I say it over and over again, and it's just because it's it's a really good example. It really is. And uh, why go and use something that might be might work, but then later on down the road you'll run into issues. You might have to alter a table just because you didn't do it right the first time. So just do it right the first time. Just use this here syntax. So that sums it up. That's uh, the basics. So I'll be providing some assignment stuff, and I will be providing some of these here files in our uh, assignment folder, in our week eight or week nine folder, I should say. So if you have any questions, just send me a message. But yeah, thanks for watching.